Hello, and this is Mike coming back at you with another video on discrete mathematics. Uh, in the previous video, we wrapped up chapter two, and we just quickly talked about arguments with uh, quantifiers involved. Uh, nothing really new, nothing really different uh, that went on there. In this video, we're going to start chapter three, and we're going to begin to actually look at how do you prove mathematical statements, uh, mm -hmm. mathematical theorems, uh, and mathematical facts. We'll talk about some of the uh, different types of techniques of proof uh, that you will see not only in this course, uh, but also when you go on to take techniques of proof as well. Uh, we'll be doing some uh, really low-level problems just to kind of help get our feet wet here. Um, and we'll also talk about counter examples as well. In the next video, uh, we're actually going to do uh, sample problems. We're going to do some sample proofs. In this video, we're just going to introduce the method uh, and the steps involved in that process. are going to give some definitions as well. So the method that we'll be focusing on for this video and the next several videos uh, is the method of direct proof. Uh, when it comes to proving something using a direct proof, uh, it mainly comes down to the following three steps. First thing you're going to do, and this is sort of an optional step. This is more just for you if you feel that you need to rewrite it, uh, if, you, if you feel that you need to make yourself uh, more comfortable, uh, is to, one, express the statement in the form for all x in d, if p of x, then q of x. So you may want to, for yourself, actually take the sentence that's given uh, to you in the uh, problem uh, and underline pieces of it uh, and say, okay, this is for all, uh, this is uh, the P of X, uh, these are, uh, this is my Q of X, uh, things like that, um, identifying what are the pieces making up the quantified uh, statement. In a very similar way, uh, you could see something like for all X and Y in some set D, uh, if P of X comma Y, then Q of X uh, comma Y. Um, there are many, many cases uh, and several cases that we'll see in the uh, future videos uh, where these facts involve more than one um, number from some set. So our predicates will often contain more than uh, one variable. So that's step one, that's again, optional. That's based on your level of comfort uh, and your um, OCD-ness, if you will, uh, to put things in a strict, logically quantified statement form uh, before, <clears throat> before we continue on with this process. So once you've done that, if you feel that you need to, uh, step number two is to begin writing your proof and you start writing your proof by supposing X is an arbitrarily chosen element in D uh, for which the hypothesis or hypotheses of P of X is or are true. Um, once again, maybe you're um, arbitrarily choosing two values, X and Y, in this set uh, 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 D. Maybe it's three values, X, Y, and Z, but whatever. Typically, we would start our proofs off by saying uh, this as suppose X is in D uh, and suppose P of X uh, or just suppose X is in D and P of X. And you'd be stating uh, what that predicate P of X is. Three, the third and final step, which is kind of all uh, encompassing and kind of broad, uh, but you're going to use known definitions, uh, known theorems, what you've assumed in your hypotheses, uh, and any other facts and rules of uh, logical inference. Uh, you're going to use all that stuff to show that your conclusion Q of X has to uh, be true. So this is taking on the problem straightforward, um, you know, head on proof of this fact. You have for all X in some set or for all X and Y in some set, if P is true, then Q is true. You let these guys be in some set. You assume that P is true. 
you take known definitions uh, that are related to the the uh, statement or the fact that you're trying to prove, use uh, related theorems, and just plow right through uh, and show that Q has to be true. There are other ways to show that a conditional statement like this is true. Uh, those involve some um, those involve some backdoor method kind of things, uh, and we'll talk about those later on in this chapter. But this is the three-step, maybe only two-step uh, process uh, for proving something as a or using a direct proof. And those are for uh, universally quantified, um, universally quantified statements for all x in some set or for all x and y in some set. We can disprove statements of this type. We can disprove um, universal statements um, by providing a counter example. Uh, that's nothing new. We've seen this uh, before. Uh, we've actually done some samples in the uh, previous video where we've actually uh, disproved uh, universal um, uh, statements. So this is uh, n n nothing new. Uh, to disprove a universal statement by counterexample, all you have to do is find one guy in that set uh, for which P of X is true and for which Q of X is false. So you have your universal uh, quantified statement for all X and D. If P of X, then Q of X. If you can find even one, just, just one guy in D, uh, such that P of X is true and Q of X is false, then you have disproven that universal statement. You have provided a counter uh, example. Again, we're going to see examples of these guys in our next video. We also have um, existential statements on top of just uh, universal statements. Uh, existential statements are a lot easier to prove. There's a lot less work uh, that would be uh, involved. Existential statements typically take on the form. There exists X in D such that Q of X is true, uh, or else there exists X in D such that if P of X, then Q of X. All you have to do is you have to find just one guy in that set that either makes Q of X true, or in this case here, you just have to find one X value in that set D um, such that uh, it makes P of X, or um, such that assuming P of X and that particular X value makes it true, uh, then again, using facts, definitions, uh, known theorems, uh, showing then that Q has to be true. So those guys are um, a lot less uh, involved. Overall, there's uh, less work that has to be shown uh, for those. Um, and typically when you are proving mathematical facts and proving mathematical theorems with a uh, universal statement, you're typically leaving X uh, as this truly unknown um, value. Uh, the samples we saw back in chapter two, um, our domain sets were small, so we could, you know, actually substitute in every possible value for X uh, and show that this thing was, uh, was, was true. But when you get into higher level math courses, uh, you'll be working with, say, the set of all rational numbers or the set of all whole numbers, or the set of all uh, reals. Um, and there are infinitely many of those numbers, so you can't actually go through number by number and show that that's true. Um, when dealing with an existential um, statement, you only have to show that this is true for one. So overall, there's uh, less work involved in proving an existential statement. So as I said in the next video, 
uh, we are going to see how we prove and disprove these uh, types of uh, statements. We'll do several sample proofs uh, to see how we go through the method of direct proof. We'll see how to write these things up. Um, but before we see those, I just want to give you a couple uh, basic um, definitions, some basic facts um, about uh, numbers so that we can use these definitions in our next video. Integers or whole numbers, as you know, are either even or odd. Uh, so let's give a more mathematical definition to these words even and odd. Uh, an integer n is even if and only if n is equal to 2 times uh, some whole number. An integer n is odd if and only if n is equal to 2 times some whole number and then plus 1 added on at the end. And it's this symbolism right here. An integer n is even if and only if n is equal to 2k, where k is an integer, and an integer n is odd if and only if n is equal to 2m plus 1, uh, where m is an integer. It's those two bits of uh, notation there. Uh, the n is equal to 2k, where k is an integer, and n is equal to 2m plus, 2m plus 1, where m is an uh, integer. These two uh, notational things um, if you if you go on to take elementary theory of numbers, uh, you'll be seeing those guys being used quite a bit. Um, but also we're going to use those uh, in this course here uh, to prove some basic facts about numbers. Another couple words that you uh, have heard uh, several years back, primary school maybe, uh, if not, then uh, junior high, um, the words prime and composite. An integer n is prime if and only if n is greater than 1. So prime numbers are greater than 1. There's always the, the big question of, oh, is 1 considered prime? No, it's not. So an integer n is prime if and only if n is greater than 1. And for all positive integers, r and s, if n is equal to r times s, then r is 1 or s is 1. This is a slightly longer uh, but more sort of mathematically concrete way of saying uh, the only positive divisors of the number n are itself and 1. So that's the, the definition of an integer n greater than 1 being prime. An integer n is composite if and only if. Again, n is greater than 1. And n is equal to r times s. For some positive integers, positive whole numbers, r and s such that r is not equal to 1 and s is not equal to 1. So this right here n equals r times s, blah, 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 r not equal to 1, and s uh, not equal to 1. That is the, again, a bit more lengthy way, uh, yet the more mathematically concrete way of saying uh, the number has, uh, the integer n has um, divisors besides 1 and itself. And I know this was introduced earlier on in the course, but just once again, uh, we denote the set of, uh, of integers uh, by this fancy looking Z. That's what we use to stand for the set of all whole numbers. So this is all I wanted to mention in uh, this video. Once again, just went through the three step or the three steps uh, possibly two steps uh, involved in the method of direct proof. Um, talked about how to disprove uh, universal statements by providing a counter uh, example. That's something we had seen uh, previously, so that's nothing really new. Um, and then we just gave some definitions of some uh, very basic words that we use in math. Uh, but we're going to use these definitions, and we're going to use 
uh, this terminology uh, when we prove facts uh, related uh, to numbers in our next video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, until the next video, take it easy, guys.